Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Car Radio at Citra. Part four of the five part series for getting the stereo installed into the BMW X5 with the amplifier installed and possibly steering wheel controls and stuff like that. In this video, I'm going to try and tackle the steering wheel controls as well as getting the stereo completely mounted and in the hole and finished up. Hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks. Time to do some wiring. I think I'll get the microphone out of the way first, so just so I can put that panel back on, and then that way I'm only working in that one section. Microphone. Mm. Microphone. Is this got a factory mic location? Ooh, it does. It does. Can you guys see that? It's really dark in here, but I think my camera's got good enough low light. There's a there's a little blank right here. Probably hard to see because it's light up there. Hold on. If you guys can see that already, sorry, I just can't tell because the screen on my GoPro, I think, is quite dark. Um, but you can see that there's a little blank just here with a vent in it. I'm sure that will have to do with the factory phone, so there's likely to either be a microphone or no microphone up there. Those there appear to be just... Oh, I know what those are. Those are ultrasonic sensors, so that's to do with the security system in the car. But that should be a microphone panel, and I think I should be able to get the factory mic in there. I mean the aftermarket mic. That's what I've been trying to do more of these days, you know, mount the microphone in the factory location. It just looks better, means you don't have to see anything. So let's see if I can get this down. I wish my car had one of these factory mic locations. I think the only reason it doesn't is because it's got the big EyeSight camera unit up there. But I wonder if that comes down on its own. Probably not. That's yeah, supposed to turn the lights on, but they don't do anything. Got it. I feel like this thing has to come out to reveal some screws or something like that because it looks pretty loose to me. As long as I don't... Oh yeah, there we go. And yep, there's a couple of screws up there. I'm not going to unplug that because that is to do with the car's uh, alarm system. Although I may have to if I want to mount the microphone. The screw, hopefully it's the only two. Often the case is just two screws holding it up and then tongues at the other end. Oh wait, no, there we go. That worked a lot better, didn't it? And there's the two screws. I can unplug this, this is just a light module. Oh, oh, oh. Diggy. Yep, there's the factory mic. That is going to get unplugged. There we go, unplugged. That wire's going to stay there, so there we go, there's the factory mic unit. Hopefully I can remove this piece off the back of it and mount my microphone on the back. That's the plan. Aha! Just push that clip back and then slide it out. Bingo! There's the mic. Now, I just hold the microphone in place with hot glue. Because there's no heat going on up there, so there's no chance of it ever melting again. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll. I mean, yeah, I think long ways would be the way to go. Long ways like that. And then some hot glue holding it in place. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some electrical tape over the vent at the front and the two vents at the back. And that way it means that the only sound that's going to uh, pick up is sound that goes in through these bottom two vents, which you'll hear come in through here. So there'll be no external road noise or anything else that can go into the microphone from anywhere inside the unit here. I better go turn the uh, hot glue gun on. I don't know if you guys can see that because this camera is obviously fisheye lens and not macro but I've got, so you can see the vents there and I've got electrical tape over that side. Now I just need to put a piece over the front. There we go and that's the front one covered up. So now the only two inputs for sound are these bottom two vents which are going to be stuck down onto that piece there. Also the hot glue kind of adds a seal around the gap, kind of completely seals it off because obviously this unit it was well sealed off because it was mounted in there but you know I don't want the sound going off anywhere else and missing the microphone. That's ready, just wait for this to warm up. 
Okay, that's all dry and ready to go. While that's been drying, I've been starting some prep work on the loom. So I've got my two female ISOs and that ready to be soldered together. But let's uh, put this in now. See what it looks like. Yeah, you can. I can kind of see that. I'm not sure if you guys can. Yeah, you can just see the microphone through there, a bit of hot glue around it. From the top, you can see I've got it completely sealed off with hot glue. And that's not going anywhere anyway. Oh, it has to go through that way. That's right. Wire through. Click. It's up. Okay, now I need to pop the wire out of somewhere, somewhere. I wonder if I can do this with my hands. Just tape a wee section of the cable to this pokey prongy thingy. Stab myself in the finger, there we go. Pull that up from there. Got it. Too tight. So, what I actually might do, since I've got the tape here, is I'm going to loom this to this wire a wee bit I think just so it can't be yanked on Use that thing. oh there we go it's up okay little screwdriver there good at success there oh, look at that perfect length it's not often that the microphone comes back with a good amount with um, the right length on it usually it's still very long now getting this bad boy back on this is something I was slightly worried about because that is a big piece of cable I've got going in there but let's have a look and I think we should be all right come on Great success! Okay, microphone's done. Just need to do the USB cable and the power loom for the stereo now. I think I'll do the USB cable. That'll be pretty easy. I just noticed this little blank in the glove box up behind the actual glove compartment. Um, what I'm going to do is make a hole in this just big enough for this male section to fit through but not the female. And then I'm going to run this through here, loom it onto the loom, and then that way this can go back through the hole and plug in with, this, with the uh, into the glove box. And then that way that can't get lost. Sounds like a plan. Just uh, up there in the right hand corner is where I'm talking about. So I can probably use the Dremel for this. Or maybe just my uh, stepper bit will be enough. There we go, a bit of a hole going on there. And, oh yes. See, this is what I want. It's like just wedging through. Just like that. Because what this means now is that this can't come, can't go through there. That's what I want. Now, I just want to check this works because after I've got this in the car, theoretically, this end will be loomed up at the stereo. I need to make sure I can actually get this. Yep, just like that. Sweet, no worries. So now I can put the USB cable in the car. That's all ready to go, ready for the power wire, and then there's my USB cable, good to go. Okay. Can't be bothered setting up the time lapse for this part, so I'm just gonna record it normal and then speed it up. done um, I've even wired up the illumination and the mute wires even though they're not getting used just I think it looks tidier than having some wires sticking out of here with bits of tape around the end of them 
and that white one obviously goes for nothing, so I don't need to worry about taping that off. So now I'm just going to loom it a bit. I've also just realised that I can't, that I'm probably going to have to unloom this as well, so I can put power on the reversing camera. But we'll see how I go. We'll see what. Yeah, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay, and I've also realised that I can't put the stereo in yet because I haven't done anything about the steering wheel controls. Still got that bridge to cross. Alright, anyway, here's the power. Click, please, click. There we go, click. Perfect length. Look at that perfectness. Okay, I will get my test lamp and test all of these to make sure that I have everything hooked up the right way before I plug the stereo in. Permanent. Yes. Accessory. Accessorize. Key. Key, key, key. That is action. Right, there we go, accessory off. Cool. That's working. Uh, illumination isn't there. Reverse. There's our reverse light. Take it out of reverse. Cool. That's working. I believe I've tested all the speakers already, but we might as well do it again just in case. I'm also planning on doing a polarity test once I've got the head unit in, and if anything is out of line, I'm just going to change it at this point. Sweet. That's all good. All the wires there. I do need to get accessory for this little red wire here. So I shall do that. Take. Cool. So for the steering wheel controls, I may have to use one of these ASWIC uh, CAN bus resistive interfaces to get the steering wheel controls going. But that's only if I can find some CAN bus wires. And the thing is, I don't know, you can't test for CAN bus wires. And the plug, like this one doesn't have just a plug to tell me what ones are what. It's all over the place. So really thinking about that, that's probably my only hope is to try and find the wires coming out of the steering wheel under the steering column with a resistive, uh, with a resistance level on them and then I can run them straight to the head unit and use the built-in resistance decoder. That's probably my only hope. So that's what I'm gonna try and do, I'm just gonna start digging. Oh guys, I've had a good crack at it. Like, I've got all these wires here and I narrowed it down to this lot here because I figure these ones here are going to the steering column adjuster switch and these two thicker ones here I'm guessing might be the airbag but I don't know. So I've um, been testing all these ones here. I've tried a combination of different things like this is the thick brown one here which is ground. I tried testing the resistors between there and the individual single wires couldn't get anything to change by pushing the buttons. I tried them, tried the resistance difference between each pair, between the twisted pairs. Nothing was happening when I was pushing the buttons though. It's, but it is possible I've found the wires or probed them, but just not been able to see a changeable difference because I haven't cut anything. But for obvious reasons, I don't want to cut anything without knowing what it does. So um, I've had a good crack at it, but I think I'm gonna call it because I'm not having any luck with any of the wires, finding a, uh, a changing resistance level with the buttons on any of them. So I think I'm just gonna put it back together, put the stereo in and call this a done deal. And and unfortunately, like, I could use a steering wheel control adapter, but I would but I would need to know where the CAN bus wires are, and I don't know where those are. The, I mean, there's an OBD plug here, there'd likely be CAN bus wires in here, but I don't know what ones they are, so there's not much I can really do about it unfortunate but what matters is I tried and I had fun doing it so yeah no luck on the steering controls unfortunately European car difficult car at that um, yeah no luck there but thanks for watching anyway guys the next one is the very last video of this five part series and it's gonna be all completely done and good to go so if you don't want to miss that fifth part when it comes out you know with, of the finished product and everything like that 
make sure you hit the subscribe button, give the video a like, and also you can help support me on Patreon as well. I think the link will be up around here somewhere at the end. So thanks for watching and have a good day. Thanks guys.